Hello everyone, my name is Greg and I dev stuff. Welcome everyone to episode 17 of the tactics game in Unity. Gameplay menu and rounds. While I will be explaining what we are going to do in this episode, I will clear our root folder. It gets a little too crowded at this point. So in the last episode we have implemented a turn system, which grants turn to player characters and allow them to do their actions. But right now, after executing all the commands, we cannot continue in any form. So we want to introduce a way to advance the round in the game, so it will reset the ability of the characters to do their actions. Before we do that, we want to introduce a gameplay menu, uh, through which you will be able to control the game when you are in combat. Create a panel called Control Panel. Copy the command panel state into this control panel, so the shape and placement of the panel will be copied. Good. Now let's add two buttons on this panel and turn and close. So set close button to disable the panel. Good. Now we want to make it possible to open this menu by pressing right mouse button. So select game manager. Let's minimize all the components, so it will be easier to navigate our stack of components. Create another new component called Game Menu. Open this new script. Here in the update, if we press right mouse button, it will open the menu. And now if we launch the game, I can open the menu by pressing right mouse button.
but there is a problem. If I press right mouse button when my character is selected, it will not deselect the selected character and open the menu overlapping with the command menu. We need to limit the ability to open game menu if the command menu is opened. Open game menu. We know that if our selected character is inactive, that means we are delivering the commands to the selected character or doing something else. So let's use it as a condition to be able to open the panel. Cache the reference and use its enabled state as an exit gate. Good, I cannot open the menu if I have selected character and delivering the command to this character. To be honest, I don't like this implementation. We might come back to this later in the series to redo it. This episode is brought to you by generous support of people on Patreon and members on YouTube. If you want to join them, link to my Patreon in the description and join button available right now on YouTube. Okay, we have a menu, which you can open and close. Now we want to make it possible to advance the turn, so our character can act again. For this we will need to maintain list of all active characters on this scene. Select Game Manager and create another new component called Round Manager. Inside create a list for all characters with character turn component on the scene. Then create a new public method called addMe, which will add the character with character turn component, which we pass as a parameter to this list of characters. Initialize list if it's null. To be able to call this method easily, let's make the round manager to be singleton. Now in the character turn, on start, create and call a new method called addToRoundManager. Where we will call addMe on the round manager and pass this character turn. Good. So we have a list of all characters which can take turn in the round. Now when we done doing taking our actions in the round, we want to click on next round and it will iterate round, grant the ability to act once again to every character with character turn. So in the round manager create an integer variable for round counter. Create a new public method called next round. Add plus one to the round counter in this new method and iterate through all characters in the list and grant them a turn. This will set their can walk and can act into true state. 
So when the next round is called, all the characters will regain ability to act in this round. Now in the editor on the end turn button call next round. There is a small confusion about turn and round right now, like we call button and turn, but we are calling next round method. Don't worry, this will be made more clear in the next episode, where we will be separating characters into sides, or you know, player and enemy AI side. Hide the panel after you select and turn. Good. Now in the game we have an ability to move character. You cannot move two times in the same round. You need to call next turn. Then you will be able to move around again. Good. Ok, we have a problem right now. There is no way to back out of the selected command. If I select attack, that's it. I'm stuck. Until I execute it. And if for example you are in the state where you cannot attack anything, which means you cannot execute this command. Like for example having an attack command but there is no targets around you, you stuck without a way out. Open command input. In it let's clean the right mouse button input. And here we want to stop current command input. Add this to the attack command input too, so we will be able to stop it too. To stop command input we need to call deselect on the character, enable the ability to select character, and set is input to false. So to not repeat ourselves, reuse this part of the code. Reuse stop command input in the attack command too. Good. Ok, it does allow us to reselect character, but it does not clear the move and attack points if we cancel selection. To clear this we need to cache clear utility. And in the attack clear attack highlights. And in the move, clear move highlights and pathfinding. Ok, let's add a little more information to the screen. Let's add turn count and selected position on the screen. Create text objects for this. Open round manager. Create serialized field for this text.
and create new method called update text on screen, where we will update the text on the screen. By posting the round counter into this text object. Call this update on start and every next round. Reference the objects and yes, it works. Now position. Open the mouse input, create a serialized field for position. In the update, if we are outside the selectable position on grid, we will say outside. And if we are selecting the node on the grid, put the position of that node into the text. Good. Good, this is it for this episode. If you have any questions or any ideas about code, please leave your comment below. If you're interested in seeing what will come out of this, please subscribe. If you want to support further, you can find my Patreon in the description. Special thank you to Andrew Vilong, The Soul Hashdu, Dominic Makiocha, and Fari Pese for their generous support. With best regards, see you in the next episode.